America's FX, we have the 2023 bond program. Mr. Rear. I'll pass it over to Randy. <laughs> yeah. Can you can you load that? There we go. Okay, so as you mentioned, this is the 2023 uh, bond update. Um, we're going to separate these moving forward, so a lot of times you will see a 2024, a 2023, and sometimes a 2017 as we have updates on those. <clears throat> so a little bit about a process here. I've got a couple of items tonight. Um, one is the um, all high school track and field event lighting uh, GMP. So this project provides lighting to all the track and field events. Uh, the reason it's required is because when we turfed all those high school football fields in the 2017 bond, we relocated a lot of those track and field events from the D-ring, which is in the back of the end zone, out to other areas which are not lit. Um, on this project, Huckabee is the architect and Hill and Wilkinson is our CMAR. Um, this project was advertised and bid um, to subcontractors by Hill and Wilkinson, and they have scoped those bids and provided us with a GMP of $2,226,378, which is within the overall project budget. Um, our goal is to begin work on this uh, project this summer and go into the fall. Our, our ultimate goal is to have everything completed in time for the 24-25 track season. Um, and then a recommendation for this item will be, will be presented next Monday night as a consent item for approval. Uh, my next um, kind of bid to speak about is the CSP for the emergency responder radio system. So we've talked many, many times uh, at the board here about this project. Uh, we're very excited to finally have some bids in place here. Uh, this project includes the installation of the required emergency responder radio antenna system to improve first responder radio coverage within all of our district facilities. Um, testing was performed in all of our facilities and it showed that 45 of our facilities needed some type, some form of system installed. Um, we sent out over a thousand notifications that this bid was going to be taking place and we received eight responses. <clears throat> um, a little bit about funding. So actually the safety and security department was able to um, receive a grant uh, fund for a little over two million dollars, um, the 2022 through 2025 school safety formula grant. Um, this grant can be used for this project and our intent is to use that funding first before any additional funding would be used. Um, we do have money included in the 2023 bond for this project as well, but some late breaking news today is actually uh, Mr. Garrett's working on another grant uh, that can potentially fund the rest of this project, which is great. Yeah, so um, can't make any promises, but if we, if we are awarded that grant, uh, it, I really feel confident that we can get it done within the two. Um, part of the evaluation criteria involved and when looking at the bids that came in on this were the number of days to complete. Um, as I mentioned, that grant that we do have in hand has to be um, spent by April 30th of 2025. Um, most of the bids, if you looked at them with a single vendor, uh, took over a year to complete the project. But by multi-awarding to more than one vendor, we feel like we can cut that duration in half. Um, so we are bringing a recommendation to award to two vendors um, in order to try and make that, that deadline for that grant funding there. Um, this, rep this recommendation pr uh, presented provides the best value to the district based upon criteria to consider um, per Chapter 2269 of the Government Code. Um, pricing is within our overall project budget, and uh, we will be um, asking the Board to approve the use of additional contingency funds within the overall budget. So what that means is these projects are all directly related to the AHJ, which is the authority having jurisdiction of each municipality. Generally, the AHJ is the fire marshal. And so at the end of the project, when we say, hey, we've done the work and we, we should have great coverage now, they're going to come in and they're going to walk through and use their radio and look for any dead spots. If there are any dead spots or any other, any other work required by the, AA, the authority having jurisdiction, we want to be able to provide that immediately rather than having to come back to the board right, for additional approvals. And so that's really what we're talking about when we speak of additional contingency funds. Those contingency funds would still fit within that overall project budget because we are under budget. Um, additional bid information, the bid tabs and whatnot will be provided to the board for review uh, prior to next Monday and a recommendation will be, will be presented as a consent item next Monday night. Um, next steps on the construction side, um, those two items basically. So in June we're gonna, you're, you're going to see uh, consent items for both of those bids that we just spoke about. And with that, I'd answer any questions on the construction side of 2023. Any questions? Ms. Taylor. <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you so much. Uh, 
for this, uh, for such a complete report, I in total agreement that uh, you award to multiple vendors uh, so that the grant period doesn't expire. I just wanted to say thank you again to the voters publicly because Mackenzie, my daughter, uh, participated in track and field and the light, there was no lighting. I, people had their cell phone lights on and the kids were doing long jump and triple jump and some of the parents even said this is too dangerous to have kids jump where they can't see. So again, just want to thank the voters for that. It's going to be um, just critical for our students moving forward. Dr. Barker. Thank you, Madam President. Um, always appreciative of finding alternative funding sources. That's really helpful. Thank you to um, all the teams involved and, and Matt Garrett for continuing to look for additional funding sources. Um, just a quick question about diversifying vendors. Are they very niche in what they do or is there the possibility that if like one cannot complete the work that having that other vendor could then possibly come in and complete any work that didn't get done? I think the, you know, we didn't, we structured the bid to where um, we had packages, right? So one for each municipality. Sure. Um, I think the answer to both your questions is yes. So they are, they both are um, specialized in this type of work, this telecommunications realm, right? So the answer to your second question would be yes, one could come in. We didn't really structure it that way on the bid, um, but, but if, if need be, I think that they could do that. So. All right, thank you. Up sure. next, technology. All right, thank you, Madam President. This first item is regarding our data center, and this is essentially the need for a fire suppression system in, in the data center. As you can imagine, there's critical equipment in there, and we need to be able to you know, address a fire if that would ever be the case. Um, similar to some of the other construction projects, this is going to be a multi-step process. Um, the first step in this process is uh, selecting an engineer or architect. You know, by the definition of the, of the code, this would be considered a public works project, so we follow that, that process. We're going to have to pick an engineer. The second step would be selecting the construction delivery method, and then the third step would be selecting the purchase hardware installation services from the vendor that would be awarded. So similar to some of what you just heard with Randy, we plan on bringing a consent item to the uh, June board meeting for the engineering firm for this project. This next item is regarding our device replacement for our program specific devices. Um, you know, at the top, the first bullet says we typically replace our devices around that five year mark. I will, I do wanna give uh, Michelle Jacobson, all of our campus techs, our zone leaders, they did a great job going back through all of, all of the departments and looking at what's out on campus currently or in our inventory system. Is it being used? And, you know, does it need to be upgraded? So I feel like we we're really trying to take a conservative approach there. So they've gone through and, and met with um, every campus looking at what's out there and what needs to be replaced. So primarily th these would be devices essentially where iPads aren't used. Right, so there are program specific technologies in career and tech ed, AV, special ed. Uh, I know Raptor, some of that stuff is, was put in in 2017, so that can kind of tell you the age of, of some of that equipment, and, and the same would hold true for library circulation. So we're really trying to get the most out of our investment, but ultimately um, we do need to replace some of that equipment. We're planning on, again, a consent item at the June board meeting. This next item is regarding um, 2023 bond technology department staffing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in December, if you recall, I said we'd be bringing staffing requests forward as projects come forward. And uh, an example of that I put in the sub bullet is our, our um, ERP system. We hired uh, somebody for that enterprise application support. We recently had the board approve a very large project to replace all, you know, basically uh, the majority of our iPads. So with that, there's a lot of different labor involved, and if we're replacing 34,000, we're collecting 34,000 and handling 34,000. So we have, to, we have to supplement some of our staff. So ultimately what this is, is that it's really broken down into a couple different categories. One of them is what we, we would call contracted services. This would be essentially for some of the gear that we've already ordered, it's here in our warehouse. If you recall the E-rate program, where we had to take delivery. This would be adding some supplemental staff throughout the summer to get that stuff prepped and ready and placed into the campuses. 
That second bullet would be essentially the second part of that order where it's going to get shipped to a third party. They're going to do a lot of that legwork in their facility and ship it to us. And then the, the uh, third bullet under contracted services is once that equipment arrives, then we have to get it in the hands of the students over a several week period. So essentially that number one contracted services, a supplemental staff through the term of, of trying to get that technology deployed. The second item is what we're calling short-term hiring, if you recall. I said we would analyze um, cost on services such as professional learning. And then also, again, there's, there's additional you know, work that's needed in our technology warehouse. So on the professional learning side, I know um, uh, Ms. Gall and Dr. Green submitted or sent, sent along in the board letter some analysis around what those hours and what that cost looks like and where we feel our best value is. So we're going to have a recommendation in that consent item around professional learning. And on the technology warehouse support, what, what we're trying to do there is just follow these ebbs and flows. So really, we, we feel like the, the core of this work is going to be done over a two-year period. So there'd be a, a, essentially a budget in there to allow us to hire temp employees that would range from like 17 to 20 hours a week during those peaks and peaks and flows to handle residual value and handling all this stuff. You know, we also, just to point out, we have reduced our overall technology staff with our budget situation, so we do need some extra hands on deck to help, help process this amount of work. So ultimately, that technology staffing plan would be a consent item uh, at next week's meeting as well. So our next steps, um, and a few of these things we've already talked about it at the work session, but our campus sound and paging, the, the pricing has come back in that. There'll be a uh, consent item uh, in June. Also, our security camera storage replacement, that project is ready to bring forward as consent. I already mentioned the fire suppression, device replacement, and the technology department staffing. If we forecast out also into August, at that point we would anticipate the construction delivery method for the fire um, suppression system in our data center. And then um, we're also starting to look at um, cellular distributed antenna system, probably very similar to the approach Randy was using for the uh, emergency responder system where we have to you know, analyze really the locations, the spectrum, and, and see how that fits with some of our other projects as well. But we potentially would bring that forward uh, as a discussion item in August. As far as consent, in August we we're, we'd be planning for the construction delivery method for fire suppression and then possibly an engineering firm for the cellular distributed antenna system. So with that, if you have questions, I will do my best to answer them. Any questions? All right. Got out of here clean. All right. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks. Moving on. Mr. Rare, you're up again. Finance report part two. Thank you. Uh, in previous board meetings, we've discussed the possibility of revising board policy C local uh, to exclude TRS on behalf expenditures in addition to recapture when calculating the fund balance target. Payments made by the state to TRS on behalf of a school district must be recorded as, as equal revenue and expenditures. So it's not a true expenditure of the district when we're looking at spendable funds. And so the revised CE local policy uh, to exclude TRS on behalf expenditures and the fund balance target uh, would be brought back to the board at the June 10th meeting. And the proposed changes, it represents a component of our annual budget planning as we look at what our fund balance is. And so we'll continue to review that each year. Any questions? All right, moving on. Fiscal year budget projection update. Did you find the tree? Okay. Yes. All right. So tonight we'll take a look at the fiscal year 24 budget and specifically the updated projections for revenue expenditures and fund balance. So when we look at uh, our local revenue, uh, these, these projections for both expenditures and revenues are updated through the end of May. Uh, for our actuals up, updated through May. And so, you know, as a reminder, we talked about tax collections at a previous meeting, how uh, legislative changes that took place after the budget was adopted uh, has, has led to our projected tax collections to be much lower than, than what was budgeted. 
uh, you'll see on the next slide there will be a little bit of an offset on additional state funding to make up a portion of that. Uh, the interest earnings is probably the biggest, uh, the second biggest difference for local revenue. Uh, due to the high interest rates, we've, we've actually received uh, much better revenue than what was, what was projected. So the budget included $7.4 million, and right now we're projecting to be a little over $15 million for interest income. And so overall, looking at total local revenue, uh, we'd be down about $19.5 million from what was in the budget. On the, the state revenue side, uh, as I mentioned, uh, with lower property tax collections, we will re receive a little bit of additional uh, state funding, and so right now we're projecting about $11.1 million in foundation school program above what was included in the budget. And then on the federal revenue side, the biggest adjustment is in the uh, school health related services, and, and that's due to a uh, a change in the calculation on, on what could be included as far as billable services for our med Medicaid eligible students. So at this point, we're, we're anticipating a pretty significant reduction in, in that revenue account. And so overall, uh, for the operating revenue, the budget adopted budget was 558.3 million. We're currently projecting 546.2 million. Uh, so a difference of 12 million, which is about 2% of our adopted budget. On the expenditure side, uh, thankfully, since our revenue is, is coming in less than what we projected, the expenditures are also coming in less than what was, was budgeted. And so you'll see pretty much every single category that we have, we're currently projecting to, to have some savings in, in our budget. So overall, we, we uh, budgeted 573 million. We're currently projecting 556 million, so a savings of 17 million on the expenditure side, which is about 3% of our budget. And so, to uh, to true up our our expected revenue and expenditures for the year, uh, we will be bringing a, a budget amendment at the next meeting for approval. And so, what you'll see here is that's a decrease in local revenue of 20 million uh, to account for the reduced property tax collections. Increase in state revenue by 10 million, uh, reduction in federal revenue by 3 million. So overall, there'll be a net decrease to our budget of 13 million on the expenditure on the revenue side, and then on the expenditure side, uh, we're looking to decrease the budget by just about 8.3 million, and that's due to the uh, the reductions that have been made in, in department budgets for the remainder of the year. Uh, we were able to pull that amount back out of budgets, and so. Uh, we're going to be able to reduce our expenditure budget by almost 8.3 million. And so that gives us our general operating deficit. Uh, the adopted budget included a deficit of 14.9 million. Uh, currently for June, we're projecting a deficit of about 9.8 million. But then that is, that's before we, we've had the district budget reductions. And so that's almost 8.3 million. And we're currently looking to uh, reclassify some of our capital expenditures uh, to using our, the proceeds from our land sale to offset that of about 1.5 million. And so that would leave us with a projected deficit of just under 20,000. So I, I do wanna highlight that's still our June projection. So we'll continue to work on those numbers through the remaining months, but that's where we are right now. And then the, uh, the next slide is taking a look at our fund balance projection if we were to end up with that small deficit. So our, our fund balance, our goal, and this is using the uh, revised policy, uh, subtracting out recapture and then the TRS on behalf. Uh, and so our, our goal would be 128.6 million and that would put our our fund balance projected at this time at 132.5 million. So we would be above our target. So remaining steps for this year would be to close out fiscal year expenses, uh, try to, to minimize the amount of, of purchases that roll over from one year to, to the next. Uh, we would also be looking to finalize our revenue projections over the next few months as we uh, get our final student counts for the year. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Anybody have any questions or comments? Ms. Taylor. So when I saw the projected deficit, my first response was, wow. And uh, 
I think we've talked about it almost ad nauseum. When you have a budget deficit, you're in a, you only have two options to increase revenue, which we know did not happen from our partners. And the other side is to cut expenses. And so I, it's not lost on me how hard you have worked, uh, Dr. Rapp and your team, to re reduce expenses, $8.2 million. That, that is a lot, that's significant to get us almost to a break even point. And so I, I just wanted to applaud your efforts for that. I know whatever was cut <laughs> likely will be painful in, in other areas as we move forward, but just wanted to call that out and, and just um, again, say kudos to your team. Dr. Parker. Thank you, Madam President. Um, to piggyback off of what my colleague mentioned, I want to make sure that, that people hear that these are not fluff cuts. This is not just money that was laying around somewhere that we decided, oh, we don't need that. You just heard about the lack of technology staff that we now have that we have to bring in some additional support to, to be able to manage the technology that we're bringing in that is necessary for our students to learn. This, there are positions that are not being filled through attrition that create gaps in support. Um, and that doesn't mean that we're not going to be supporting teachers and making sure that every student gets the best education possible. It's just we had to really tighten the belt. And as Ms. Taylor mentioned, we are very appreciative of that tightening of the belt because that is a miraculous number to get it to 19,000, not million, thousand, 19,000. Miraculous, but that meant some very difficult conversations and some shuffling of some staff and some adjustments of some roles and responsibilities. And so I want, our, I want everyone, all of our stakeholders to hear that. Remarkable that we have had to make these cuts in a year when our state has a surplus of money and there's six billion sitting for public schools in Austin. I'll stop there. Ms. Alcatab. I just want to chime in as well and just let you know that I'm very, very, very appreciative of you and your staff and Dr. Rapp and everybody because, you know, as Dr. Barker said, you guys did really, really have to tighten that belt in order to make this happen. And it is unfortunate that we were in that situation, but for you to come up and bring it down to a $19,000 deficit is miraculous and very, very appreciative. And, you know, unfortunately we're in the situation that we are that we don't have additional revenue coming in. We don't. And so you guys have had to make those hard decisions and due to attrition, possibly lose. And for you guys to do this is miraculous. Thank you. Dr. Bonner. Mr. Rare, um, let's see, last month we got within a half a percent <laughs> of the overall budget. This month, we've got it down to the price about of a Toyota Corolla. Um, gosh, what you gonna do next month? That's all I wanna see. Um, the one thing that I'm going to say is that the state promised to make us whole with the um, additional $100,000 um, tax credit um, homestead exemption. And by my calculations, they're $14 million short. So um, I would say if we had that $14 million, um, I personally know how I would be voting to spend it. Um, but um, the state shorted us $14 million. 
I appreciate the work to get it down, but I will tell you once again, the state has come up short, and they came up short $14 million for the promises that they made um, to districts um, across the state. To Dr. Barker's point, the money sits in Austin. It does not sit in classrooms where it is needed by the students across the state of Texas. And on that happy note, we'll move on to the June 10th um, board meeting consent agenda preview. Okay, thank you. Uh, another very busy month in procurement. Uh, there are a lot of, a lot of purchases going on as, as we begin, you know, pr uh, work on the summer projects. I uh, just wanted to kind of highlight a, a few of these and then I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, the first one is to consider approval of band uniform replacement for Hebron High School. Uh, this is uh, approximately 400 band uniforms and it's part of an eight year uniform re replacement cycle. Uh, so these were last uh, replaced back in 2015-16. Uh, we have campus refrigerated milk coolers. It's 102 uh, milk coolers as part of the child nutrition spend down plan approved by T TDA. And then we also have the renewal of the rover program at the elementary schools. Uh, this renewal provides increased safety and security measures at the district's elementary schools that do not have a school resource officer. And then the student athletic UIL accident insurance uh, policy, it provides coverage for students involved in UIL sponsored events. In addition, all students on day field trips are also included in this policy. And that's highlighting quickly the, uh, the many different purchases that we have this month. Are there any questions? Thank you very much.